Hi there, my name is Katie and welcome to this video presentation for IQ and aptitude tests. Now this video is going to focus on spatial, abstract and diagrammatic reasoning. But before we get into some example questions, let's quickly ask ourselves what is IQ and aptitude tests? Well basically, IQ and aptitude tests are designed to measure trait intelligence and cognitive ability indicated by your efficiency in processing information. Okay, so what that really means is you might be going to apply for a new job and that job might ask you to sit a few tests prior to an interview or at an assessment centre. And these tests can come in all kinds of different styles. So they could be numerical reasoning, they could be verbal reasoning, mechanical comprehension, and even spatial reasoning, which is what I'm going to focus on in this video. Okay, so spatial and abstract reasoning, which is the same word for one another, spatial abstract, is the ability to interpret and make drawings from mental images and visualise movements or changes in those images. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got lots of different shapes, which is what spatial reasoning is all about. So here we've got four different cubes, and basically this question would ask you which cube could be made from this net here. Okay, so spatial reasoning is all about working with different shapes, so you'd be rotating, reflecting, and manipulating shapes in order to reach the correct answer. Okay, so here are some real golden nuggets, some top tips for spatial reasoning that you can use to improve your performance in your spatial reasoning assessment. Okay, so golden nugget number one, so aim for speed as well as accuracy. Okay, so many test centres want to see how quickly you can work as well as getting all of the answers correct. But generally, you will be working towards a strict time limit in which this will make the questions a lot harder to answer because you'll be working under pressure. So make sure prior to the tests, you find out what kinds of questions you'll be required to answer. So you should also find out whether they're multiple choice because this will help you to practice and ultimately improve your performance when it comes to your actual assessment. Okay, so next, you are what you eat. So when practicing these types of questions, ensure that you are drinking and eating healthily. So avoid things such as cigarettes and alcohol, food with high, con high fat content, sorry. And the reason for this is that all of these will make you feel sluggish and therefore it will affect your performance. And the idea of these tests is that you want to be at the very peak of your performance and to, to ensure high marks and if it's for a job to get the job at the end. Okay, so research has shown that those people who have regular good sleep are far more likely to concentrate better during psychometric tests such as spatial reasoning. So try to get regular good sleep leading up to that all-important assessment. So make sure you watch the video at this following link I've given you here as there's a lot more information there to help you understand the test questions and how best to tackle them, okay? So make sure you do check this video after you've finished with these example questions I'm about to show you. Okay, so let's have a look at the first example. Okay, so here we have a question that relates to complete the sequence and the question is fill in the missing square in order to complete the sequence. So as you can see here, you're trying to work out what that box is going to be based on your four options. So you would need to consider the following things. So rule one, the sequence adds one diamond each time. The diamonds are being added from the top left and continues to be added in a clockwise manner. So you should be able to see we've got the first diamond there. So you're missing that one. So let's see how it changes in box three. So we've got the original diamond which we started with, we've got now we've now got one top left and top right. So you could assume that this diamond here could have been placed in this one. So as you can see in box four, you've got the diamond you started with, the second one, this third one here, and another one has been added. So, so if you work backwards, so this one can be removed, then that one can be removed. So this one here would have to be in this box here. So you can eliminate the answers you know to be incorrect. So you know it wouldn't be D because these are not joining up like that. You know it's not answer C because 
the diamonds you started with is in the middle and you're working at the top and not at the bottom and again you know it's not going to be B because you're working with the top diamonds instead of the one on the right so in this example in particular you need to put to pay attention to numbers so as you can see the sequence is only changing by adding one diamond each time you just need to work out how that diamond is being added and where it would be placed so for this question the correct answer is in fact a okay so example number example number two so here we've got rotating the figures and the question is by using rotations work out the missing square of the sequence as you can see there's a lot of things changing so here we've got a black hexagon then a white one a black one so you can assume that that one there is going to be white so you can eliminate the black answer options because you know this one has to be white so you've already eliminated two of the four choices so it's either going to be a or d okay so let's look at rule number one the cross moves one place clockwise so here we've got starts in the bottom left it moves one space to there and then moves one space again clockwise so you know that that cross there has to be in this position there for this one so you know it's not going to be answer A now and you know it's not going to be B and C because you've already ruled those out so the answer is going to be D and you can see we've not even had to go through these rules because you've already eliminated a few of the answers you know that the answer is going to be D okay so example three which is reflections of figures and the question is work out which option is a reflection of the question figure so using this line here as your mirror so you know it's going to be reflected like so so from downwards you're not reflecting horizontally so things to consider for this question so you need to pay attention to where the mirror line is which is what I've just told you and figures A, B and C are all manipulations of the shape so basically these squares have been moved in a slightly different place so you know it's not an actual reflection of the question figure okay so as you can see for answer option A you can't have two squares together like that because that's not what's shown in the question figure so you can rule that you can rule out that one again you can rule out answer option B because again we know that the two squares on top are not side by side so we can rule that one out again with C they're not together so you can rule that out so the answer option is D okay so example four we have odd one out so here we have which figure is the odd one out so for these questions anything could be changing in the sequence and you need to work out what's changing so this could be the colors or it's been reflected or rotated or they've slightly moved or altered in some way so anything could be changing so you've got to look out really carefully and these red circles here indicate what is actually missing so as you can see this question is based on alternation so we we have a horizontal line in each of them so that's not what's changing we have a black square and a white square a black square and a black square so you could assume that the odd one out is this one because or this one because it's got different colors if you carry on looking through the sequence you can see that the colors are still changing so it can't be to do with the colors so answer option E you can see that the circles are representing what's missing and that that is that a square needs to be on top of the horizontal lines as you can see A, B, C and D all have a square on top of the line where answer option E has only got two squares under the bottom of the line so the odd one out is in fact answer E okay so example number five so this is working with 3D shapes so which of the cubes can be made from the cube net now these questions are a little bit more trickier because they rely on you to visualise building up the net to make the cube and visualising where the shapes would be once you've built up that cube. So things to consider. So for this type of question I would suggest that if you struggle to visualise things in your head to create, create a net yourself, cut, cut it out, draw on the shapes and build up the cube to work out where the shapes would be so as I've wrote there 
to make a cube net, draw on the shapes and see what it actually looks like. And this will really help you to practice these types of questions. And once you've practiced these questions a few times, it will become much easier for you to understand. Okay, so in actual fact, the, an the correct answer for this question is B. So if you had this shape facing towards the left, you know that the arrows are still going to be going side to side like so. And this shape here would be folded downwards, so it would create the shape like so. So just remember to work out where the shapes would be once you fold down each of the sides to create the cube. Okay, so example number six. We have question and answer figures. So which of the answer figure fits in with the question figures? So here we have two question figures. So these relate relate in some way. So you've got to work out how one of these could fit in with the question figures. Okay, so things to consider for this, these types of questions. So the shape must contain one or more, more line of symmetry. So as you can see, the question figures here, the only thing that could be joining them in some way is reflections. You can create symmetrical lines for each of these shapes. So answer A can be ruled out because you can't create a symmetrical line through the shape. Answer B could be plausible. So let's make sure that it is so by checking the others. You can't do it for answer option C. And again, you can't do it with answer option D. So it is in fact answer B, which is correct. So like I said before, these types of questions, you'll have to work out how these question figures are interlinked. So what do they show? How are they similar? How can you use these shapes to identify which of the answer figures fits in with the same pattern? So anything can be changing. So in, in this one in particular, it was symmetrical lines, but again, it could be colours, it could be angles, it could be anything. So just make sure you're paying attention to how they interlink with one another. Okay, so example number seven, we've got test shapes. So which set does the test shape belong to? So set A, set B, oh, sorry, that's meant to say set B, or neither. Okay, so here we've got the test shape. So you've either got to see if it fits with test with set A, sorry, or set B, or it might not even fit in with either, either of them. Okay, so let's have a look and break this test shape down. So here we start with a black shape, and it's joined to a grey shape, to a black shape, and to another black shape. So you know it doesn't belong to set A, because this links a black shape to a white shape, and this doesn't contain a white shape, so you know it's not set A. Okay, so... Let's see if it fits with set B. So you know it starts with a black shape, links to a grey shape, to a black shape, to a black shape, which is in fact what this is showing. So it does belong to set B. Okay, so just carefully see how the test shape could fit in with either of the sets. Now this might not just be colours, you'll have to remember it might focus on what kinds of shapes are being used. So just remember to work out what types of things are changing in the test shapes and how they could be used to be placed in either set A or set B. And remember, you'll usually be given the choice of neither, so it might be a trick question and it might not even belong to either of them. Okay, so that's it for this presentation. Now to get more free testing questions, I would click on the link below this video. Uh, if you can, subscribe to this channel for free, like this video, and if you do have any comments or queries, or if there's any ideas of more videos you would like me to do, please drop me a, a message in the comments box below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, I would like to thank you for listening to this video, and I would like to wish you the best of luck with any spatial or abstract reasoning tests that you have to sit. Thank you, my name's Katie and I wish you the very best.